Hello, it's Hayden Quinn from the incredibly famous band Big Reef here um, with another intro to this episode of our podcast. I had a really good day yesterday. I drove up to Goulburn, of all places, and popped in and met a new friend, a lifelong friend, I hope. Uh, Their name is Leonardo Sunshine, and they are in the band called The Tinnies, or The Tin Knees, you might be aware of Leonardo's work on their TikTok, which is, um, uh, they do all kinds of very comedic songs, videos, um, some that seem to work their way into my algorithm all the time are the ones about, uh, Australian country towns and sort of giving interesting humorous facts about those towns. And the Tin Knees are a fantastic, um, humorous band, pop band, I would say, drawing references from artists like Billy Joel, Flight of the Concords, stuff like this, because because those two things are incredibly similar. You'll you'll you, you'll get it. Just listen to them um, on Spotify. Um, shortly after my chat with Leonardo, I jumped back in my car, as is my want to do, and I drove up to uh, Wollongong. I met Morgan there, Morgan and Morgan and I played a show at La La La's, it was a great gig, really fun, great to play with the fantastic band Duolog, who were um, launching their musical slash EP called Space Prom, that was really fun, and uh, lo and behold, there in the audience, Leonardo Sunshine had driven all that way just to see us play, so that, that was really, really touching, so Leo, if you're listening, thank you for that, that was sick. Um... So I had a great day, and then, then I think I got back home at like 2 a.m. last night. So I'm pretty tired. Um, really wanted to get this one out to you ASAP. I hope you enjoy the chat. And as always, uh, you will only get to hear the first half of this if you're listening on our free stream. You can get access to our Patreon stream, which has all the full episodes of our podcast. That is at patreon.com forward slash Big Reef. Um, It's the best way to support our band, even if you think that our music's shit or you find us insufferable as people, but you really like the people we're interviewing and and you enjoy listening to the full podcasts, that's fine. I don't begrudge you giving me money, even if you find me a pain in the ass or if you find Morgan a pain in the ass, you can subscribe at patreon.com forward slash big reef and there you can get an rss feed which will give you access to the full episodes and a whole heap of other shit i mean we we're we're putting out our music there early uh we're giving you demos we're i don't know maybe we should write some blog posts but (laughs) i could not be fucked anyway please enjoy this fantastic chat with leonardo sunshine to the big reef podcast it's hayden again flying solo as tayo cruz once said or was it jason derulo it wasn't Tim O'Matic, was it? It might have been Tim O'Matic. Well, one of the three. <laughs> Anyhow, I'm here with my wonderful guest, uh, Leonardo Sunshine. Hello. From the band The Tin Knees. Now, the first point I want to get to, mm. The Tin Knees, I always make a point to pronounce it The Tin Knees and put a big space there. Obviously, there's, there's a tinnies sort of pun in there. How do yeah. you pronounce the name when you say, when you say oh, I'm in the band The Tin Knees? It actually depends who I'm talking to. Mm. Um, I, I see the Tinnies as like a nickname because um, mm-hmm. I, I love drag queen names. I think they're very, yep. very clever. So that's, I was uh, drawn into having a name like that. Yeah, cool. Um, I can see that. But yeah, it's, it's actually, it's actually a, a Wizard of Oz reference having, um, having Tin Knees because well, I originally wanted the, the Tin Man as like a logo. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, and and it, was, it was more of a coincidence, actually, that it s- sounded like... So you hadn't even realised you came up with tin knees and you thought that was cool. Like, like it, was, it, it, was <laughs> made, it was maybe five seconds out. Yeah, okay, cool. five it, seconds it, is pretty it, long. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's cool. A nice little sort of a surprise five seconds um, after and yeah, a moment and I guess of genius. Uh, the audience we fell into in Wollongong when we first started out was very much a beer drinking culture. Right. I was almost making fun of it in a way when yeah. I first started the band because I, I was almost envious of these bands who were putting in low effort, just singing about beers and bongs of boys totally, and just totally. like getting shot straight up to the top of <laughs> Triple J players, which I love. Um, good for them. <laughs> yes. But I wanted to, um, you know, do something a bit more well, glam rock than that. 
Yeah, yeah. And, and like satire doesn't always have to be like um, uh, rude, for lack of a better term, right? You don't have yeah, to be... Yeah, it was, it, was, it was aberration. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so, Leo, if I may call you that. Yeah. Um, tell us a little bit about your band. Um, uh, what, yeah, what, why don't you set the scene first? Um, I know you guys started uh, in uni uh, in... Not Dubbo, but in uh, Wollongong. In Wollongong, yeah. How, how did that come about? And, and what kind of music were you listening to at the time that you met some of the other band members there? So start, it originally started with a couple of housemates who couldn't play instruments at all. And okay. they, just, they just wanted to play gigs at a local bar, Rad Bar. Um, very much a, a, a dingy dive bar that everyone loved in Wollongong. You talk about it like it no longer exists. It's yeah, um, it got knocked down. It is now, I want to say, like a restaurant or something. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, that's very, sad. very sad. Yeah. yeah. Um, we just had something like that happen in Canberra. Actually, we had there's a bar there called Sideway. It was kind of Canberra being a small place. Um, it was like the only alternative sort yeah. of space for club music and uh, more alternative bands and yeah we just lost that so i know the feeling it's very sad it is they, so yeah so the housemates just wanted to play a gig there i was like i'll teach you how to play drums and bass so very you know count to four uh-huh. bass this, drum. this is you you're, you're the yeah, band was, leader yeah yeah and I, I taught them not very well <laughs> um and then so we did a couple of gigs and then somehow won like a band competition to play at yours and ours and so after that they quit and then I... Uh, oh, so, so, so not the original members anymore? No, oh, no. I've, uh, I've shuffled through actually a lot of members. Yeah, okay. um, And now landed on uh, my Golden Six, which is uh, someone I went to school with, uh-huh. Jeannie Baby in Dubbo, and then the rest of the Wong Gong boys okay. who, all, who all went to the same school and know each other. Cool. Um, two of them are actually brothers. Yeah, right. Which is um, bass and drums. So they're, oh, they're locked perfect. in. They're locked in. Yeah. <laughs> are they twins? No, oh, no. That's sad. But close enough. Um, uh, that's, that's really interesting. Because yeah, we're, we're, we're all um, very fortunate that we're all very good friends. Mm. Um, friends before you pulled some of these people into the band or was it uh, Me and Jeannie Baby were friends before. Mm-hmm. And then uh, we all just got along very well. Cool. Um, which is kind of bad for rehearsal because we don't rehearse we uh yeah when we hang, we hang out, out. Yeah, like totally. we should rehearse but then we uh, you know fuck around a bit more of course cause, because we are friends um i i could i could do with some of that when i'm um making music with my brother or, or in yeah. other um outfits i'm always just so focused on making the actual music that i think i've become a pain in the ass <laughs> to people around me um you the, the way you're talking about the band it sounds a little bit like you are sort of a um is this the mind child of yours has this come from you or, or how yeah, collaborative I, is, is i guess i started it but it's sort of uh growing a bit bigger than what i can handle <laughs> um, i don't mean that as in we're successful just as in <laughs> it's taken on a life of its own yeah, yeah. well it's it's more collaborative now um I, I I really feel like that I am the least talented person in the band. I just have somewhat of a creative, dis, you know, idea of what I want okay. things to go. And the boys are so very um, talented at what they do. Um, Jeannie Bay, for example, has just graduated from the con for piano performance. Wow. So, he, he, yeah, they all can, like, really play. Yes. Um, I just... Um, tell them which way to go creatively i guess i think yeah talent is a funny word right like i can 100 percent relate with what you're saying i think that i've come to terms with or convince myself that talent doesn't have to be sort of like in the moment skill right like mm. a, a, a performative talent or creative talent is sometimes all about like the big planning and the big thinking through and the big sort of ambitious but I can't play a guitar to save my life and I can't play keyboards to play, to save mm. my life. You know what I mean? But I can still come up with the ideas and sort of plan them out. I wonder if that's something you're maybe, do, do, am I connecting with something there or not so much? Yeah. And I guess I've never really thought about it. Like what, um, we just, 
we've just fallen into this and it's fun, so we're still doing it. That's cool. I think once it's not fun, I would like to stop. <laughs> <laughs> cool. <laughs> And of course, there's definitely been moments where we're like, oh, this is a bit shit. Yeah. Um, what kind of things? What, what, what you- we were privileged enough to play at the Edinburgh Festival mm. a couple of years back. Amazing. And our uh, manager at the time didn't show up for un- uh, different reasons. Right. Um, and we Was this a surprise? Were you there in um, Edinburgh? It was, it, was the, it was the day before we were about to jump on the plane. We get the call and it's like, I, I have to go to LA. I'm really sorry. Whoa. And we're like, okay, we're, we can handle it. We, we'll go. <laughs> and a lot of us hadn't been overseas. This is like first time. Yep. We had a layover in Bangkok. So we're just like scared and like really confused. <laughs> and we were like butting heads a little bit because we didn't like know what we were doing. Yeah. Okay. Um, and the same reasons that's why it was so fun, but we had we had such a great experience. Totally doing the festival. Um, but it sounds like there was. But some I think if we there. were, if cracks were to show, they would have shown. That's good. Living together for a month. Right. Um, a couple of boys had a wrestle. Just get out the energy. <laughs> um, but, but besides that, it's all it's all fine. Um, so how does a festival like that work? Where like do they put you up for that amount of time? We Are got you- employed by. This venue, House of Oz, which was um, got a lot of grant money, mm. so we were fortunate to not have to worry so much about ticket sales. We just were paid to play at the end of the yep. night. Um, unlike uh, other performers who have to like really hustle and like hand out flyers. Right, right. Um, How yeah, many nights are you playing a week? Work was we had Sundays off. Oh my god, Sundays and Mondays off. So yeah, it was a lot of shows. That's really full on. I yeah, we got really much. good. It I was bet. it was really funny. Like, oh, when you rehearse a lot, you get better. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, and, and not not too stressful. Being how many of you were in the band at that stage, living together for that long? And- um, so we had six of us playing, and then uh, Frankie's partner uh, okay. was there. She was really helpful. She like filmed some stuff. And oh, cool. Um, yeah, it's good to have a level-headed person okay. in the band. So you would describe the rest of the band members, yourself included, as not so level-headed? We have we have our pros and cons yeah. as every band. <laughs> you got enough to cover the gaps, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we all have interests in such different fields. Um, Frankie's I'm starting to become a pharmacist okay. at the moment. Um, uh, Quinton is – he works in town planning, so he's doing yeah, a right. nine-to-five – I have, um, I have a friend who does that. Yeah. yeah. So we're all... It sounds we're, really, really regal, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> we all have scattered interests, but we'll um, commonly enjoy music. Right. Yeah. Cool. Um, I want to go back, all right, because <clears throat> I found out you, you were very helpful and you gave me a lot of background on yourself and, and the band and, and it appears as though you grew up in Dubbo. Is that yeah. correct? Yeah. What, what, what age were you, uh, did you leave Dubbo? I moved out of Dubbo, I think I was 20, 20, 20 okay. or 19 to, um, I didn't do that well in school. So I okay. went to Wollongong cause they had like a HSC equivalent thing. And then from right. there, um, studied music there. Cool. Um, what was it like coming up in Dubbo? Like, do you look back on those first 20 years, um, fondly? I think so. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It there was, there's not really a creative there is, but I'm mainly talking from a music, live music mm. point of view. There's cover bands and then that's it. Yeah. Um, and there's some really good cover bands there, but there's just not a market for original right. or something a little different, which is fair enough. I understand it. If yeah. you're Was wa- a- working on a farm and you have like one – day to like you don't want to listen to some totally you yeah, want no, you no, want no. to listen to the hits you want to listen to cultures and have a beer with your mates you don't want to listen to like you know that totally makes yeah, sense yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I definitely agree with you there was it a source of angst when you were younger though i mean oh yeah not. definitely i hated the world and, and then um but it's i think it's good because i developed a sense of humor i think yeah yeah um yeah, growing up that was more or less funny to me because uh-huh. there's Dubbo 
sadly is sort of a punchline. Um, it's it's a funny town. So we're talking about what is it? It's like three hundred kilometers, two hundred com- yeah, kilometers west cent- of Sydney. Yeah, or? central west, like r- pretty close in the middle of New South Wales. Right. Yeah. Hot. I've been there once. It's hot, and it then also hot. quite gets quite cold. Uh-huh. It gets frost and stuff. But yeah, not. Um. Yeah. And what what uh, so, so so you're in Dubbo population of maybe like 40,000 people you're growing up you're doing yeah. school yeah. how do you first get into creative arts whether it be music or other things you showed me a beautiful prop that you made when I <laughs> walked into your house um, so you're clearly artistic in more than um, just the auditory sense yes what, yes what happened and how, how did you connect with that I started piano when I was quite young I think like okay. four or something wow yeah um, I was really into it mm. when I was younger just because Living on the farm, I guess I didn't I didn't get to go into town that much. So I was at home mm-hmm. trying to make myself busy with what was available to me, which was like a piano and arts and crafts. Yeah. And then so a lot of my childhood was very tactile, like helping mm-hmm. dad on the farm and mm-hmm. um, playing in the dirt. <laughs> <laughs> um, Good for your immune system. Yeah. Yeah. Um. <laughs> like, um, but I don't know, like, like, were you, how did you come across, I don't know, Triple J or a community radio station or something like this that, that sort of pulled you into a more um, alternative, but I, you, know, I, you weren't listening to Cold Chisel, for example, I don't, I, I don't I think. Guess, I guess um, my parents are like huge ABC listeners, so I guess I okay. was, um, and a lot of BBC um, British comedies I grew up on mm-hmm. probably too early for me to understand. Name them. I'm I'm relating. I first one I remember loving was Black Books. Yep. I remember watching that like year four, uh-huh. and then and then like rewatching it again. I was like, oh, I had no idea what these jokes <laughs> meant. I didn't know what alcohol was. Yeah. Um, I had that experience recently with Faulty Towers. Yeah. Which I used yeah. To watch probably the same age. Yeah. And even now I'll go back and watch and be like, oh, that wasn't just funny because it was a non sequitur. It was yeah, funny because it yeah. was an adult joke that I didn't understand. Um, which is kind of cool because you get to rediscover. Totally. Yeah. Um, and I think it says something about the performance of these comedic actors, right? That they can make something funny even if you don't have the full context of or, or understand the joke. Yeah, like yeah. just the delivery can sometimes be like, fuck, man, that's hilarious. Yeah. It gets me in the gut even though I have no idea what they're talking about. What so, so black books? Norman Gunston, I noticed was uh, n- not not English, but um, a, a yeah, reference I, I, that you. Um, it's quite it's quite hard to describe that um, Australian that era of Australian comedy work was. Yeah. Um, so um, I want to say theatric, mm-hmm. but um, they're still working because um, TV comedy was still so new, they're still working out how subtle and how obvious you need to make visual gags. And um, I think it's really, I feel like he really paved the way for, what would you call call him? Because he, he was pretending to be well, a reporter. Like, like an Ali G type yeah. for Australia's Ali G, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was... Interv- he was getting these big interviews yeah. and just fucking them up majorly. And I think he really like paved the way for Australian comedy. Yeah. And then unfortunately TikTok has ruined good comedy. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. Because you have a very uh, popular, some might say famous TikTok yourself. Um, I have a small following in America, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Really? So, so you know that it's primarily in yeah, America? Yeah, I looked at the statistics and it's like all 80% is like American and then like my small town stuff is yeah. I'm trying to branch out to more Australian audience. Okay. So, but so, so the, the, the premise behind a lot of the content that you put out on your TikTok is you go to small towns, small country towns around Australia mm. and sort of, I don't, don't want to use the term lampoon, but you kind of, you, I don't, you ever, about, I don't, I try not to, I don't ever want to punch down. Right. Cause I do generally love these towns and mm. like what, I, because I, I'd always get upset when 
I'll be traveling with friends and they'd be like, oh, what is there to do in this town? I'm like, right, I, right, open right. Your, I open your bloody eyes. There's a, there's a museum here. It's just, you can have fun anywhere. You can, why do you need to be in a shitty bar in Sydney mm-hmm. when you can be at a railway museum in exactly. Goulburn, having the time of your life, you That's just right. need. I guess I, I don't know if you can drink in the railway museum. I just, I might you can find a way. Okay, but cool. it's, no, it's I guess it's the um the people you surround yourself with is more how yep. you do it. Um. I yeah. think that's really important. I think that's a really good point. And and in in the content of yours that I have watched, that's totally. It's obviously, you know, it's comedic. Yeah, it's 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 meant to elicit a laugh, a chuckle even. Yeah, um, but um, but yeah, it's it's never like mean spirited. I don't think. My my one on Dubbo, I guess, was a bit meaner because I lived there, so I felt like I you had, had history. It was, it was it was fine, you know, <laughs> yeah. the Dubbo pass, if you will. But um, it. Yeah, I, I, and I do, because there's a lot of scenes where I, do, I don't put in because I'm watching it when I'm editing it. I'm like, mm. oh, that's actually mean. Right, right. Um, is it, okay, can I ask, is it like improvised? So you go around to, you, you go to a, a small Oh, it takes town. like a, a month of writing. Really? Because it's all intertwined and I like, okay, I'm going to go here, here, here. Obviously, I like find places. Well, you have then, to research the town if you haven't been there and see what kind yeah. of. Stuff. But yeah, a lot of the research comes when I'm there. So I, I okay. spend like over a week in the towns when I do the video. Wow. And I'd spend like the first three days. And I would like go to the pub or go to the law library and like, what do you do? What tell me about yeah, the town? Cool. When I, yeah, when I came to Goulburn, I just, there's like a local historical society. Uh-huh. And uh, he just like chatted my ear off for an hour. <laughs> and it was just, it was free information. It yeah, really totally. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's cool. I don't know if we mentioned we are here in Goulburn recording this. Uh, something about the Big Reef podcast is we almost never record it in the same place more than <laughs> twice. So it's it's cool. Um, cool to be here in Goulburn. What's been the best location? Uh, honestly, it's the pub. Near yeah, right, my right. brother's house. Just because. Um, well, doesn't it get too noisy? It does. Um, yeah. Does that add to the ambiance of the podcast? It does a little bit. Um, it's really cold in Canberra at the moment. Mm. So if you sit out in the smokers area, you don't yeah. get too much noise. Um, yeah. Um, but I'm looking forward to... Can you edit in some maybe some so, pub ambient yeah, music? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I can. I'm not going to though because okay. that's time consuming. <laughs> As someone who edits videos, I'm sure you know, it's, <laughs> it takes a lot of time. Um so growing up in uh, in Dubbo, I'd like to get back to your TikTok stuff a little bit later. But um, you met Genie Baby. Yeah, we went to, we went to the same school. Cool. Um, his parents were the music teachers at the school we're at. Mm. So, and I, I guess I, I hanged out with him the most out of my friends there. So go over to his house, and it was a household of musicians. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah. So. I guess um, GD Babe and his family really encouraged my interest in music, along with my mm-hmm. along with my parents just wanting me to show interest in anything um, <laughs> besides being a farmer. So your parents didn't sort of want you to. They they didn't see. I that think because they they've worked so hard in their life, they want they wanted us kids to not have to, right. um, you know, wake up at five and yeah. tend to the cows. Yeah. Do um, they? Do they enjoy it? Did they enjoy it? Are they still doing you'd it? You'd have to ask them. Okay. I, it's uh, right. If you can give me their numbers, I'll yeah, talk okay. them after <laughs> this. I'll get a, a another podcast lined up. Okay, so that's interesting. And, and, and like at a young age, were you and Genie Baby sort of putting together grand plans to make creative things? We or? went. We were, we, were, we busked together. Yeah, sick. Um, and just playing in the school band mm-hmm. together. We're talking primary school here that you Primary guys school and mm-hmm. high school, yeah. Cool. Um, and we'd do, like, dumb performances at school. Mm. Um, yeah. Whenever I see someone from school and I tell them what I'm doing, mm. their response is usually, oh, that makes sense yeah, that okay, you cool. two are doing that. So yeah. you were both performers for sure? Yeah. That's cool. Um, Genie Baby was like in the musicals. Um, and yeah, and I started making videos with a little digital camera That's around sick. around that time as well. What kind of stuff were you making? I remember I used to remake music videos. Sick. Like, yeah. like try and like shot for shot kind of yeah. thing or completely new 
A oh, little bit of both, yeah. Cool. Um, which ones? Give me some songs. I remember I, I, I did um, I'm the Walrus. <laughs> I don't even know that that had a music video. I, maybe I doesn't, know. but I, I, I remember like... Doing that. Yeah, with this like really... I know like two pixel camera or something. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, yeah, that was really fun. Just, just around the farm. Cool. Yeah. Okay, so you've been making things and and realizing that like time kind of disappears when when you start making a yeah, thing. Yeah, I I do I do forget time yeah. exists when I, um, which is the goal in life, I guess. I think so. Yeah, yeah. we're just ticking down the clock, yeah. waiting to die. <laughs> May as well sort of not notice that time is passing as we get closer to death. Okay, and so you mentioned <laughs> at the start, you mentioned at the start that um start of the podcast that you migrated to Wollongong and was that pure necessity of like um, bridging the gap of uh, you, you mentioned you didn't do too well in school like did was I it think like- I just wanted to get out of Dubbo okay because yeah the city was seemed like a mythical place oh uh, Wollongong did or the yeah start, the Wollongong city seemed like a city to yes. me yeah yeah um, I'm coming around to it I I, yeah. um, I uh, Canberra's uh, I won't talk too long about Canberra, but it's it's a bit boring. And I know you're going to tell me that I can always go to the, I don't know, Kingston bus depot markets and mm-hmm. uh, do that. But but Wollongong seems to really have it going on comparatively. The few times I've been there recently. I'm yeah, like, I guess no, the music is- scene is, in the chorus, the music scene's, I don't know why it seems to flourish more. People seem happier there. That's for yeah, sure. Yeah, I guess it's the maybe it's the salt water. <laughs> Could be. Yeah. Maybe I should just start drinking salt water. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll just write that one down. Yeah. Um, okay. And so you studied there, and you, and then you went on to study music. Yeah. So, so at, uh, I, I, start, I started. Yeah, and then I and then I dropped out, and then I went to the con in Newcastle. Okay. And You've then, been around. Yeah, and then I and I dropped out of there, and then I was like, <laughs> I'm I'm just gonna stop doing uni. Um, and then I moved to Melbourne for a little bit, and okay. then and then came back and wanted to stop moving. Yeah, yeah. That, that's a lot in, yeah. in what the space of ten years, maybe or five yeah. years. Yeah. yeah. Whereabouts in Melbourne were you, and for how long? I was leaving my sister in. I uh, it was. Belford. Okay. I think the yeah. suburb was called. That sounds like the East. I don't know. Yeah. The East, sadly. But, um, but I, I was there during COVID, so I didn't really oh, get to shit. It, it experience any Melbourne, which is kind of good. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that good? <laughs> I don't just like tend to the garden and like walk the dog. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. That sounds nice. I got to say I lived in Melbourne. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, cool. <laughs> what I'd like to talk to you about is. Um, so your band, your band has, has comedy injected into the lyrics. Yeah. I, th- I think also, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I think that some of the musical themes and, and, and the way the songs present themselves sort of have a bit of a comical uh, yeah, rhythm, for lack of a better term, mm. or aesthetic to them. Um, but there is also like this callback to, I think, like classic American pop rock or soft rock Um I, I, that's what I hear anyway. Yeah. But I'm also hearing, like, actually, now that you mention it, sort of this, like, Australian beach sort of surf. <laughs> the guitar work, I think. Yeah. Sounds it's, like. It's really hard to play in Wollongong and not right, do that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, what, what do all the different members of the band bring in terms of influences? And is there sort of, like, a hard and fast rule of, like, this is the genre that we are trying to sort of make? Or is it just whatever happens comes out and you're happy about it. Yeah, we're very happy not to... Over-intellectualise it. Yeah, we... Do you mind if I do? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Thank you. We definitely have, like, <laughs> um, do, like, like put songs in a certain genre as a joke. Right. Like, we have, would randomly start playing in ska or do a Western <laughs> style to just to... Because we're playing them over and over, we just get bored and... What if we just, like switched instruments and played all the wrong notes we yeah, did right. very much is that a live like in a live environment this is what you do yeah or? and i think i think i like to think the audience appreciates it they don't really know mm. what's going to happen because we get so bored of ourselves right <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah i i 
I think we're slowly f- falling into a, a slot of a genre that we're happy with. Mm-hmm. Um, we're trying to go down more the yacht rock path these days. Interesting. Cool. Um, yeah, but we just need to play more. <laughs> yeah, how do you mean? You, you want to get in front of people or you want to play more or to just, like, figure just out? Just playing together more because we, we book a gig and then we like – you know, book rehearsals for that gig mm-hmm. and then, you know, we go our separate ways and then we, right. we, we're coming together for gigs. Um, Are you all... Because we all have our own lives and... Right. Yeah. Are you all in Sydney? So you mentioned before we started recording you're, you're in we're Sydney. We're half, half, half got our foot in Sydney and half got our foot in Wollongong. Well, that's good for a bunch of reasons, but yeah. hard to get together and yeah, write yeah. and practice, I would assume. But, yeah, the benefit of the boys being really good at their instruments is we... Right, <laughs> um, can sort of get away with a couple of practices. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. Um, That's cool. And we've just recently started playing to a click, so things can be a little bit more unrehearsed, which is good and bad, I guess. Yeah. Having so, are you running stuff off a backing track to a company? Like, why have you decided to go to a click in your live um, shows? Just to add a different element to the shows. Not so much like. Um, a musical backing track, but adding sound effects to a song, yeah, I think yeah, is yeah. such a funny, <laughs> and like we're living in, it's so easy to do stuff like that. Then why, why not embrace that sort of that technology? Like, totally. Yeah. So yeah. like when guitar pedals came out, people were like, that's cheating. It's, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. just another, it's just another synth, if you will. Hundred um, percent. I, I use auto tune on the few times where I have to sing. Yeah, live. And it's absolutely. I can't sing for shit. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I, yeah, I, yeah. I'm really enjoying like adding dumb little elements, and then also um, being in time is pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it sounds like you're all professionals, and and that may not have been that much of a problem to begin with. The the staying in time with each, with each other. Thing. I think because we, we have so much fun on stage, it, it does the tempo does really yeah. get away with us. Okay. Um, <laughs> cool. So we're yeah trying to be yeah a bit more professional, uh-huh. having playing each song kind of closer to what the recordings are and yeah yeah. Uh, you've got a show coming up and uh, maybe uh, to, to tie in with a new single or just because uh, we will be playing together. Yeah. We're playing on a bill with you guys at La La La's on the 20. 20- Do you like the name of, of the venue? Um, I Daria is one of my favorite shows of all time. And I think they used to have Daria branding when they first opened. Right. Uh, you know, like the song, la, 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 la. Oh. Do, you know, do you know Daria? And maybe they got like a cease and desist because their branding isn't that anymore. But it used to be like a Daria style. That's um, why. Yeah. La, 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 la. Um, anyway. Oh, that makes so much sense now. That's why <laughs> I like the name of the bar. Um, cause oh, I, I, fucking I love, love Daria, yeah. It's the best. I've just been re-watching it. Um, I cried, I th- I I cried thought in an episode. It's true. I want them to call it like La Bar. Okay. Yeah. Ali La Bar? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that works. That yeah. works, yeah. <laughs> Is that culturally insensitive? You can always cut it out. Eh? That's true. <laughs> um, I don't know if it is. Uh yeah, why do you ask? You ask whether I, whether I liked the I, name I, of the I, bar or is it, it's just whenever, to whenever say. Um, someone who hasn't been there, right. it's always like a talking point, the name, and I think that's what makes it a good name. It sticks. Yeah. yeah. Like, we're talking about it. It's Exactly. Yeah. I think La La's is so much easier to say. You're adding that extra La 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 La's, yeah. is, it's kind of, it's hard and annoying, and, and yeah, it's a talking point. Yeah. And... Um, they can send me a and check. I, I sometimes call it Lars. Right, yeah. Just one laugh. Yeah. No, I like that. Yeah. I think that's good. Um, triple R? Triple R? Triple R? Sounds a bit like triple R or three triple R yeah. in um, Melbourne. Uh, yeah, so we're, we're, you, you guys are putting on a show there next month. I think it's, I can't remember the date. I'm sorry. It's 20, the 24th, 24th of August. Okay, cool. Yeah. And, um, that's exciting. Um, are you hoping for the Wollongong Massive to come out and represent? Hopefully. We, we, we usually um, 
Yeah, it is a lot easier when you're from yeah. the town to... Do you have, like, a fan base there that, like, you feel their presence when, when you do play in the area, or...? Yeah, it's definitely, a, a, just like, a hometown show, if you will. Yeah, cool. Um, yeah, d- definitely different reaction to a Sydney audience. I don't know, I don't know how I can describe it. Hmm. Um, yeah, Wollongong crowd reacts dif- to differently to certain songs than Sydney crowd. Mm-hmm. Um, Better? Where, where, do you, where do you prefer playing, Sydney or the Gong? I'm not. I'm not. I don't. You, you think. just want to get paid. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Flat rate. Thank you. Yeah. Goodbye. <laughs> Okay, I'll, I'll move on. Let, let's not judge all the towns in Australia. I, I want to break... Uh, I do the, I do love playing you both, Sydney. Okay, you have to say that. Yeah. I don't believe a word of it. No. Um, <laughs> we have to uh, get to this. So the band is called the Tinnies or the Tinnies. Mm. Um, like you said, a reference to the Tin Man from The Wizard of Oz. Um, I've got a little quiz for you, okay? okay. Um, the quiz is called, Is It a Tin of Beer? Okay. <laughs> I mean, we, all, we all know that beers have some ridiculous names these days Good um, I've got a list of ten beers here And I'm going to ask you Is this a real beer tin name? Or okay. did I make it up and try to trick you into thinking it was one? Are, are you these, ready? Are these uh, from all around the world? Mm, I think they're mostly Australian Okay But I could be lying Right The ones that I made up are from here Ch- Yeah, okay. Right here yeah, in my yeah. brain Okay, the first one is called The Beer Hemoth Real or not real? <laughs> you don't need to put too much thought in. No, I want to. <laughs> you want, I'm yeah. like the visu- perfectionist in you is coming I'm, out. I'm visualizing like the label. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna say that's a real beer. Okay. You know what? I'm gonna give you half a point for that. The reason being, I made that up. And then when I was Googling real beers, I saw that there is a beer called the Be- Beer Hemoth. Okay. So really that's giving me half a point because you are correct. <laughs> it is a beer, but it wasn't when I thought of it. Okay. The Albo Pale Ale, named after our Prime Minister. That's, that's a real beer. That is correct. I, Very good. I see people not buying that one anymore these days. <laughs> All right. Um, the Nelson Ha Ha. The Nelson Ha Ha. Yeah, it's I a think, Simpsons I think, reference. I think you've made that up. Oh, very interesting. It is, in fact, a beer. Oh. I had it last week. Um, Does it have Nelson? Yeah, it kind of has like ambiguous Simpsons style character. Right. Sort of colours and face is on it. Is the beer bright yellow? It, like the, the actual poured yeah. beer? Or I don't know. I was drinking it out yeah, of the can. Yeah, so. yeah. But, um, Came out yellow, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although I've been drinking a lot of water lately. Okay, good. I had to good. just, uh, on, on the drive from Canberra to Goulburn, I had to stop three times to piss. Good. Which is n- not, not great, mm. but... um. Uh, the app on my phone says I'm meant to be drinking. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. The, uh, it's fading out now. Excuse me, I'm just going to pour another coffee. <clears throat> Wonderful. Uh, yeah, if you want to hear the rest of this chat with Leo, um, you need to subscribe to our Patreon and pay the $8.50 per month to, de- to get access to the full episodes. Go to patreon.com forward slash big reef. And um, we'd love to have you over there in our sick community. There's a chat feature on Patreon that no one uses. So you could have a look at that. Cool. All right. Uh, until next time. Goodbye.